Please welcome Lisa Jones. about this amazing show that we have for you guys and so get your paper and pen ready because we have some great speakers that's going to come out but we want to make sure that you not go home and just say I had a good time and it was nice and you took notes and then you tossed the notes in a bag somewhere and you never go back and look at your notes, okay? And so we want to make sure it wasn't just one of those, okay? And so we're going to have an amazing show for you, but i like to talk to you about the mindset because we got to go home with different people. How many people are ready to take this to another level? I mean another level, guys. And so we got to go home with the right mindset. And so I believe that the first thing that have to take place is that your self-talk or your way home has got to be right. You got to be careful what you say when you talk to yourself because you can sit here and cheer for everybody else on the stage, but you can go home still not believing you deserve to be on the stage. You can go home still not seeing yourself walk across the stage. You can look at the Corner Gate family and say they are absolutely amazing. And, you know, 2.6 million right there. Get ready to go with 3 million. And you can say they are so awesome and they deserve it, but you don't see yourself there. I mean, you can see all of these council members, 260 council members, plus council members, making over 200,000 and greater. And you can look at these council members, you can say they are awesome, but you still don't see yourself being among that group of people. I mean, you can look at these assigned seniors, and we have VIP, and we have council seats, and you can say, man, they are awesome up there, but you still don't see yourself sitting in the council seats. You still don't see yourself sitting in the VIP seats. And that is not what we come here for. I promise you that these amazing council members have busy lives. They have a lot going on in their life. They did not come here just for you to cheer for them. But I promise you that every council member that's sitting up here in the front want to cheer for you. Are you one of the ones they're going to be cheering for? We want to sit back and watch you speak. We want to sit back and watch you walk across the stage. We want to sit back and see you get recognition. We did not come here for you to just cheer for us. So what kind of conversations are you having with yourself when you go back home? What are you saying? I remember guys starting a business, a single mom with a six-year-old child living in my parents' home no car, walking to my appointments, catching buses to my appointments, I'm begging people for rides to my appointments. I can remember going to appointments and when I finished the appointment, the bus route had stopped and I had to get to go and try to find a way back home. It was so scary. But I would walk down the street and I would say, I'm going to be on the cover of magazines and on TV screens. I would be the most sought after speaker in all of the world and I would make decisions based on my desires and not based on my bank account. I said that I would never have to chase money because money is going to chase me. I said I'm a master at building relationships because relationships is the new currency. I said I would stand on stages before multitudes of people and strongholds would be broken and chains would fall off of their minds, their wrists and their ankles. I said I would build a mega organization and man I would be crying walking down the street saying that. What are you saying when you talk to yourself? Are you a senior national sales director? Are you a million dollar earner? Are you a master builder? What are you saying when you talk to yourself? How many direct RVPs are you going to have? How many RVPs will your organization have? How many people are you going to promote to district leader this month? How many seats are you going to fill at our next event? Who's going to pay for their package before they leave the hotel? What are you saying when you talk to yourself? Because self-talk is everything with shifting your mindset. 
As a man thinketh, so is he. How do you see yourself, and what do you say when you talk to yourself? If you are a, um, a living, uh, you, if you're being casual about your life, then you will be a casualty in life. Are you being casual about your life? Sometimes you're just a little too casual. Whatever a man put his mind on, it would not be denied him. I want you guys to know that Lisa M. Jones' mind is on becoming a million dollar earner in this company. That is what my mind is on. See, you don't change your life because you change, because you made a decision. That's only part of it. You change your life because you change your habits. See, you looking at people that walk across the stage and got promotions and, and acknowledgments, their habits change. They started prospecting more people. They started getting more people in the opportunity meetings. Their attendance increased. They started being more accountable to the leadership. The leader should never have to come look for you. Man, you ought to be chasing your leadership down. See, their habits change. You change your life when you change your habits. You don't change your life just because you made a decision. Some people make decisions the beginning of the year, and then nothing ever happens when they get to the end of the year because they never change the habit, and you got to change your habits. The next thing about creating a great mindset is that you got to make sure that you are associated with the right people. My question to you is who are you sitting next to? If you hang with nine broke folks, you will be number 10. If you're hanging with toxic people, then you will live a toxic life. It's so amazing that when they get on Zoom or when they come into the office, Rob, we got to pump them up again because they came into the meeting, they was excited, Jeff, and then they went home to toxic. And then every time they come back, we got to pump them up again, Mike. I'm telling you guys, you better put protection on your mind. But you got to start letting people plant the seeds in your mind. You are amazing. You are great. Stop letting, waiting for somebody else to tell you you're beautiful. I look in the mirror and I say, dang, Lisa. Girl, you looking good. I'm not waiting for you to affirm me, to confirm me, acknowledge me. I can do that. Me and God has already done that. And so, man, I'm not looking for man to do that for me. So who are you associated with? You want to be a winner? Hang with winners. Hang with people that challenge you, that apply pressure and require you to be great. Don't hang with people that allow you to think wrong and don't hold you accountable to go after greatness, right? You can't have a fixed mindset. You got to have a growth mindset. Set. Some of us are so fixed and say, I can't stand what people say, it is what it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. You can change that. So make sure you don't have just a fixed mindset. And now it's time to take action. It's time out for being vision rich and execution poor. It is time to execute the vision, write the vision, make it plain. But then at some point, you got to decide that I'm going to execute it. Man, we have an amazing show for you. I can't wait for you to hear from the great leaders that's coming up here. I want you to get ready because we are ready to give you a great show. Man, the first person I want to bring out to speak for you guys tonight, this is my brother in business. We had the opportunity to build some of the most amazing relationships in, the, in business. That's why you got to associate yourself with the right people in this company, right? And he comes to you from New Orleans. I believe he's the mayor. You can't go into New Orleans, Louisiana, and not let him know, okay? He, was, he gets an attitude if y'all come in his town and don't call him, right? And so um, 22 regional vice presidents in his organization. He is a wall of famer, guys. Come on, somebody. He's on the executive board for the AALC, and he chairs the regional meetings committee. Five diamonds in his ring. How many people know you got to put a ring on it, and then you got to put some diamonds in the ring? He is the amazing, guys. Get on your feet and help me welcome the awesome Cedric Thomas. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Good morning, AALC. Man, you guys look beautiful. Uh, it truly is a pleasure to have an opportunity to uh, come before you this morning. And uh, teammates, this has been an incredible conference. We've been doing this for 23 years, and to see what we've been able to build as a unit, as an organization, has really, really, truly been incredible. And then when we look at our theme this year, 
It's your move. Uh, the ALC has put many initiatives in place so that we can go and expand our businesses all across this country. You know, we thank God every day, at least I do, uh, for all of the many blessings that he's bestowed upon us. You know, the ALC has put seven regional meetings in place so that you can leave this place today, take the impact of this national conference, the enthusiasm that we received, the inspiration that we've gotten, the belief that has been created, and now we can take this into different areas and create the same type of momentum. And because of the freedom that we've experienced through COVID-19 as a result of working with Zoom, now literally we have recruits and people in our businesses all across this country that we can plug into these regional meetings. See, before, you know, if, if you were in New Orleans like I lived and we were in, in the Gulf Coast, you really didn't think about recruiting people in Los Angeles or Chicago or the Midwest and the Northeast, but now we can recruit these people and plug them into our regional meetings and they will have an opportunity to hear from all of these dynamic leaders that are part of this great organization. You know, there's been a declaration by the ALC this weekend that we're going to grow from 260 people to 1,000 people that are part of this incredible organization. And if you're not a council member and you expect to become one of those people, give me a shout out right now. Right? You're inspired. You know, I can remember when I first came, went to my first big meeting, uh, it wasn't that many people, uh, with maybe about 50 people or so, but I met this gentleman, Mr. Warren, and I got inspired. Right, and I, and, I, and I really saw the impact, I had an idea of what this potentially could do for me. And I can remember sitting on the front row and crying out to God and saying, God, if you'll bless me, I'll bless your people. And I remembered that there's a story about a gentleman in the Bible. It's in, it's in uh, First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And his name was Jabez. And the Bible says that his mother, Jabez, that his mother birthed him in pain and in suffering. And she called his name Jabez. And the Bible records that Jabez was more honorable than all of his brothers. And it says in chapter 10 that Jabez cried out to God. He didn't just ask him. He said, Lord, he cried out to him. And he said, Lord, if you will bless me indeed and expand my territory and be with me that I will not fear evil, that I will not do evil, and that I will not fear pain. And the word of God says that God granted to him what he desired. See, there's some young lady that's sitting out here tonight or this afternoon that's maybe a struggling single parent that's fought, that is bought into the belief that maybe potentially this could do something for them. Right? And they're just sitting there, just saying, Lord, I know it's my move. I know the next move is mine, but I can't move without you. Lord, will you just, and, and, and what they need to do is just cry out to him and say, Lord, if you just bless me and expand my RVP team. Lord, if you just bless me and expand my licenses. Lord, if you'll be with me in the tough times and in the good times. Lord, if you will keep me from evil, that I have no pain. And the word of God says that God granted to Jabez. I say to you that I stand before you today as an ALC member. Primarica birthed us in pain. And the ALC is crying out to God, saying, Lord, if you'll bless us indeed, and expand our RBPs or our council members from 260 to 1,000 people. And that you will be with us. And that we'll fear no evil. And that we'll have no pain. And God has granted it to us as we requested. See, God granted to Jabez his desires long before he saw them. You know, our company, our great company, uh, Primerica, which is led by an incredible honorable man, uh, says, you know, basically what they're saying before God is that, Lord, if you'll help us, that if you'll bless us indeed 
expand us from 130 to 150 people and be with us that we experience no pain and no evil and God has granted it to us. Will you say with me, will you cry out with me this morning and say, Lord, will you bless? See, I, you know, they mentioned the fact that I have 22 RVPs, but I'm crying out before God. God, will you bless me indeed? Expand my RVP team to 100. Will be with me that I'll, I'll experience no evil and feel no pain. And this morning, God has granted it to us. Teammates, God bless you. When we leave here, let's go and let's do something great. Let's use these regional meetings to expand all across this country. And when we come back, we, and we celebrate the fact that we have a thousand council members, we can look back and say God has granted us what we desire. God bless you, and we'll see you all at the top. are you going to make today from this event? Go to the next level and appreciate what Art Williams put in place. You got to be about it. You got to be about getting it done. You AALC now have to make more calls, more appointments, four to five directs, 10,000 personal. You can't stay the same. You must expand. And how many people know that when you expand, everything around you expands? You should be excited about making a total commitment for your family, for your kids, for your kids' kids. Depending on you to do it and do it big. We're depending on you to do it and do it big. Give it up for Cedric Thomas. That was absolutely awesome. Expansion was his topic. We got to use the meetings to expand and grow our attendance. Okay, guys? How many people are you coming back next year with? You decide today. You don't decide next year. You decide today. That was awesome. Hey, guys, our next speaker is coming from Chicago, Illinois. She is absolutely amazing, guys. Six regional vice presidents, 1.5 million in income. Come on, somebody. She has the Virginia Carter Award. She's on the executive board of the Women in Primerica. She's on the AALC Council, of course. The fastest to go from the first IBA submitted to million dollar earner. Guys, get on your feet and welcome to the stage the amazing Mika Saunders. Y'all looking good, y'all looking good. Listen, I am so excited to be here this morning. I thank God every single day for this amazing opportunity. Know that you all are so blessed to be here in this business today. Can we give it up for God one time, y'all? Give it up, give it up. Uh, major shout out to TPO, the Prosperous Dynasty. I love you guys. I understand that I would not be on this stage without a team. Right? Understand you got to be thankful for your team because, man, they are the reason that we do and we're able to do what we do. Um, also, shout out to our uplines, uh, Jeff and Lolita Mallard, repping the co-op, and also Mike and Regina Evans as well. Uh, thank you for all that you do. Um, so listen, I'm going to get right into it, you all. When I came into the business about eight years ago, I had a vision and a why. My major why was to make sure that I was able to be a present mom. Right? I wanted to be a present mom. I came in six months pregnant, and I said, I want to make sure that I am there, that I'm not absent, that I'm not at work all day, all night, away from my babies. Right? So my, business, my, my vision had to be to build a business where it worked with or without me. Right? See, we're here where we're able to actually build a business, not just have a job, right? Not just have a job where you have to work all day, every day. Now, for a season, though, 
I want you to say but for a season, right? You have to actually be the it has you have to actually work it like a job. Right? So for a season, I had to say, man, I'm going to stay committed. I'm going to work this thing. I'm going to build this thing. I'm going to make sure that I do what's necessary so that I can be a present mom. I said I came in pregnant, so I had a time frame. I had a deadline to where I had to go and get some things done in order for me to go ahead and live out that vision of being a present mom. Right? So I didn't want to make sure. I didn't put a time limit on it, but I had to make sure that I got it done. Right? So what I'm going to talk to you guys today about is building. Right? Super important to make sure that you build a business. Yes, we always talk about making sure that you visualize it, making sure that you write about it, making sure that you talk about it, but the most important thing that you have to do is you have to work. Right? You have to do the work. And so when it comes to building, I'm going to pull up my first slide here. When it comes to building, the first thing you have to make sure you do, you guys, is make sure you're recruiting. You have to make sure that you are in the recruiting game. See, when I came in, I was more so like a personal, independent person. I'm like, I can get this thing done on my own. But my upline told me, hey, I want you to keep doing, shout out to Coach Mallet, keep doing exactly what you're doing, but add recruiting. And that was a conversation that I had with my upline that really blessed my business. Keep doing what you're doing, but make sure you add recruiting. So make sure you're going wide and make sure you're going deep as well. Make sure you're field training as well, right? Making sure that when you get these people in, you're actually field training them. In order to build a business, you have to field train the people and show them how to be successful in the business. Always have someone watching what you do and learning from what you do. Have to get them licensed, we know this, right? If you don't have a license, then guess what? You can't continue to do the business, and so we have to make sure that we put a big emphasis on people getting a life insurance license, guys. And then making sure that we promote people. Listen, promotions and motions is what we say. Go in district in the first 30 days. Becoming a field trainer within the first 90 days. And I'm gonna talk more about becoming field trainer because that is the one position that has blessed our business. Making sure that we focus on that. And then making sure that you get people to race to RVP. So let's talk about the field training a little bit. Build a team with field training, right? Promote independently producing licensed agents. Emphasis on independently producing, right? We wanna make sure we promote people and they actually know how to use the license, right? We get them to district, but we have to make sure that they can go out and do what we do. I said my vision was to make sure that I had a business that ran with or without me. Anybody want a business that runs with or without you? Yes, right? You want a consistent business that continues to move, and so your system has to make sure that it reflects that, right? Produce field trainers. Field trainer is the best position below RVP. We talk about this in our base shop and in our hierarchy all the time because we want more people that can go out and get more people and show them how to be successful. And so field trainers, right, they have to get approved by us. We have to go ahead and vet them and make sure they know exactly what they're doing to make sure that we're building. Produce 10 by 10 legs with overlapping leadership. What does that mean? That means that it's not just one person running the leg, but there are other people in that leg that can run that leg as well. That allows you to make sure that your 10 by 10 continues to grow, right? And so you want to make sure you have that overlap in leadership, produce regional leaders who run their own team, right? See, I'm a leader. I want to bring in other leaders. I don't want to have to babysit leaders, right? If you are a leader, you want to have other leaders on your team. You don't want to have to babysit everybody, but that's going to take some work from you. You putting in the work, letting them know what it looks like, being the example for them, and showing them what it takes for them to go ahead and build that team. And so my regional leaders, they run their own team. They run that leg. They come to me for guidance. So by the time you become a regional leader, guys, you should know how to run that team. You should be walking into RVP knowing how to do RVP, all right? Produce RVPs who are competent, capable, and confident. So let's talk about that a little bit. So I do have an illustration. We'll go to the next slide with my RVP team. Um, we're a, a small seven RVP team, but we are doing big numbers, okay? And we are doing big numbers because we have leaders. We have independently competent RVPs who know what they are doing, right? And so my best friend, Cassandra, was my first regional vice president. She came in, and I have this set up like this for a reason, right? Cassandra was the first one. She had her team. She's training. She's producing leaders. We're making sure we build that team. Danielle was her, Danielle and Isaiah was her exchange, her replacement leg. She trained them. She developed them. She left them behind. They became my second regional vice president, right? This is still one leg. I promoted Maria Obitre, who was the third regional vice president. Her exchange will be going RVP this year, 
right? But right under Danielle, we got Christy Blair who came in, guys. And understand this, throughout this whole process, you're going to be talking to hundreds, if not thousands of people through this process. So many times you think that it's gonna be the one person that you bring in, but you never know who it's going to be that's going to be the one that explodes your business. But you have to go through the hundreds, you have to be willing to go through so many people to find the one or the ones, right? So you wanna make sure that you're willing to do that work, right? Chrissy came in and through this leg, guys, we went and we went eight levels deep to find the rest of the people that came in because so many people came in after Chrissy that didn't stick around, that wasn't willing to do the work, that gave up on this thing, right? So don't be the person that gives up on this thing because as we continue to build and recruit and find people through them, right? We were able to find Demira and Damian Bolden. Right now, they're $500,000 earners right in this business, but they were eight levels deep. That means we went through hundreds of people in order to find them. Are you willing to go through hundreds of people to find the people that may explode your business? Right? You have to be willing to do that. And then we continued on, and we got Tyann and Prince Copley, and all of these in this lineup, they were exchanges of the person above them, right? And so, man, they came in, and they also exploded the business. Now, their regional vice president is making over $500,000 a year, right? But this was building that we had to do. This was time that we had to do. So whatever your vision is, if it is to have a business that continues to run with or without you like it is for me, you have to be committed to doing the work for a season. But guess what? You determine how long that season is. That season can be three years, 10 years, 20 years. It can be as long as you need it to be. But man, also it can be six months, a year, two years, three years. For me, it was five years of just pounding the pavement, putting in the work, building people, showing other people how to be successful. Five years of that, I'm not done. I still got work to do. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not crazy to think that I'm done, right? But man, to get what I have this, and we're running over 400,000 through first with just us seven, and we're not done yet. So I want you guys today to make a commitment to go and build. Make a commitment to put in the time with the people. Make a commitment to be a leader, but also to produce leaders. It's time for us to stop babysitting. It's time for us to put in the work and then produce the people who can do what we're doing, who can be on this stage, who can become members of the AALC. We have to do that work, guys. And so this is my commitment to you all. We like to stand from the stage. We will have 23 regional vice presidents out of the Prosperous Dynasty at the end of the year because it's time for us to make sure we get back to promoting as many RVPs every single year as we need to as well. So as I kind of wind down here, guys, I want you to understand the only thing that you can control is your attitude and your activity. The only thing, those are the two things that you can control. So do what's right for people. Keep a good attitude, right? Control your activity. Put in the work. Don't be lazy with this thing. This thing can change your life. As a leader, it's your job to provide an environment and an example for your people. Be the example. Be exactly what they need to see, guys, and make sure you have a great environment for them to succeed and thrive in. And then finally, guys, pushing up people is what we do. Man, we go RVP to promote RVPs. All of you who are not yet RVPs, get it done. Make Make sure as you walk back into this room next year, you are a regional vice president on your way or already wearing the ring, guys, and on this stage to be an AALC member. Thank you all so much. That's all I got. Thank you. That girl good, right? Man, she is absolutely powerful. We are gonna keep this party going, right? I mean, is it a great show or what, okay? So Mika was talking to you guys about building, okay? And she has, she's a great example of that. And she has great leadership all the way up uh, to the great Mike and Regina Evans to show you the power of building. Next, we're gonna bring up our next speaker, guys. We are so excited about her. She is such a, she plays a big part in the AALC and why we are able to do a lot that we do. And guys, she works at the home office. And so she's a part of the strategic marketing for the AALC, as well as for partnership. I often say that I don't really know what her title is because I call her for whatever, you know? And so, and it's like, I mean, I need something, I call her. So to me, she work in every department at the home office, right? 
Um, and so she co-chairs the securities working group as well, so she assists there. She's been with the AALC 17 years. Come on, somebody. 17 years with the AALC. She's our liaison person at the home office. Guys, get on your feet and welcome to the stage the amazing Camila Cutliff. Wow, 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 good morning. This has been incredible. Has it been incredible for you too? Oh my gosh, I first wanna thank Lisa for allowing me to come on this morning. And then of course I wanna give thanks to the council who have just been like family to me for the last 17 years. Uh, my job today, my mission is to talk about relationships. So I wanted to come correct. So I went and got a definition of relationship. Okay, so the Webster definition is the way in which concepts, objects, or people are connected. The state of being connected, and I said that's perfect for family headquarters and the field because there are 2,000 people at family headquarters that we like to call crusaders there, that are there for you. Would you give them a round of applause for, for family headquarters, please? Thank you for that. Thank you for that because they support you. Now, I need your help. Would you agree for something to last, you gotta build it on a strong foundation? Would you agree with that? Okay, and so at Primerica, our foundation or your foundation is recruiting and coding. Does that sound right? So what I'd like to talk about today are some crusaders at home office that can help you do that. So I wanna start out with talking about strategic markets. Their whole mission is to help you recruit in different markets. So they have different recruiting brochures, uh, national Zooms uh, with, recruiting with a recruiting focus, and in-person, I said in-person, regional meetings. I know there's still some hesitation there of in-person, but I tell you there is nothing like an in-person big meeting, right Rob? I mean, there is nothing like getting together and everybody on the same mission in the same room. So uh, strategic markets, they do that for recruiting, but now I wanna move over to, because what I've been hearing all weekend is, a recruit isn't a recruit unless they, but you gotta be licensed to recruit. So now I wanna talk about a whole team that was put together, uh, the field licensing directors. Their mission is to help you code, recruit, license more people. Now listen to me. They're not there to change your business philosophy. That is not their job. Their job is to enhance it. Their job is to help you grow more codes. Growing more codes helps to grow a bigger business. So it's led by Toya Brent. As you can see there, they are spread out all across the United States and Canada, and they and they're waiting for your call. They're waiting for your email to talk about how you can specialize in coding, how you can cre uh, create a whole coding, uh, gosh, I wanna say mechanism in your business. That's their sole job. So now talking about them, as you can see, there's a lot of them, they're all across the country, but I see people saying, that's a lot, Camila. I don't know who that is, I missed it, I don't know, do I call them, what she say, the calling, the recruit, who do I call? We've got a whole nother team that can help with that. The field distribution directors, they are all across the country, I know many of you know them. Their job, too, is to enhance your business and it's to maximize your business. So if you have an, an area that you wanna work on and you're like, I know I wanna, Camila said something about licensing. Who do I call? Contact your field distribution director. Camila said something about recruiting that there was like brochures in my market or I wanna grow my market and, and say maybe it's another market. I would call my field distribution director. They can put you in contact with whoever you need. Now family, listen, again, this is all about relationships. You all know that more than we do. So 
I hope what, I, what you're hearing from me and what you're feeling from me is that there are 2,000 people that all they want to do is build a relationship with you. All they want to do is help you build a business that will go on for generations. So while you might not know everybody's name, I want you to start contacting the ones that you do know because they can get you to the next level. Do, can, can, can you tell me, get, I, I need a promise here. I need you to promise me that you're gonna call, say if you have a question about Women in Primerica, you're gonna call Karen Hutto. Uh, you got a question about AALC. You got a question about partnership. You'll call me. Do I, do, uh, do I have a promise? Can you promise me that? Okay, I need one more thing and then I'm, I'm gonna get out of the way here. I need a promise that you're gonna grow your recruiting in codes like never before. I need everybody to stand on their feet. I need everybody to stand on their feet. See, you're probably thinking, I got a promise stuff? They didn't tell me that when I bought my ticket. Yes, you do. Because we need to go out of here stronger than when we came in. Do you agree with that? Yes. So here's what I wanna know. Here's what I need to hear. That when I leave out of here today, I'm gonna to grow my recruiting and my licensing by 50%. Let's hear 50%. 50%. 50%. Thank you, family. I'll talk to you later. And they have done an amazing job. And guys, we couldn't ask for, uh, I mean, one of the best of the best to close this show out. Thank you so much for watching us all over PFN land. Hey. And um, so, uh, so proud of you guys for being here and sticking it out all weekend because we've had a, uh, a powerful weekend and a busy weekend, right? And so, guys, this is one of my um, uh, coaches and business, you gotta get you a coach. You understand that the purpose of a therapist is to help you to get through the pain of your past. But the purpose of a coach is to help you unpack the potential of your future. See, Ivan Earl is not called to be my therapist, but he is called to be my coach, and I'm so excited about him. Guys, 50 regional vice presidents in his organization. Come on, somebody. Income, 1.5 million, come on now. He comes to us from South Carolina, co-chair of the AALC. Guys, get on your feet and welcome the coach of all coaches, the amazing Ivan All right, how y'all doing? Man, man, I was in the back and I was just saying to myself, why do they have me coming out here? I mean, when you really think about what you've just witnessed, I mean, wasn't Mika awesome? They've laid out to you a plan of how to grow and build a primary business. See, this AALC meeting is about you. It's about you taking this information. It's about you making a decision that you want to go back home, get serious about this, and go build an organization to become a regional vice president. How many of you want to become a regional vice president? So how do you do that? How do you walk in the door of Primerica and take advantage of this business from scratch? How did the greats do it? How did the Gary Carnegie's, the Mike Evans, the Ivan Earls, the Raw? how did we do it? See, when I walked in the door of Primerica, one of the things that was fascinating about me was that they will allow me to recruit somebody. 
Man, this, you mean to tell me y'all going to give me the opportunity to go recruit another individual, bring them into this business, get them started, Jeff, and y'all going to pay me an override? First time I'd ever heard that concept, which means what they were telling me up front, how important recruiting is. How important recruiting is, am I right? Now, just think about it. There are about 350 million people in the United States. 350 million. And here we are, this great company, this billion-dollar corporation, and we've licensed 130,000 of them. So how, what is the potential? If the marketplace is 350 million just in the United States, not counting Canada, what is the market? What is the potential, Chris? How many people could we really recruit? How big could we really become if we have the think out of the box mentality? If we break through and quit thinking that small is big? If we really decide that we're going to go get big and get some serious recruiting going on, the market is there. People out there today are struggling like never before. Everybody want to be somebody. Everybody want to have what we have. They want freedom, time, and money. They want to be able to control their own destiny, be their own boss, call their own shots. They want to stop going out at the most dangerous time it is in America. It's early in the morning when it's everybody trying to get to work. <laughs> we have it. We just got to break through. Now, what do we do when we get them? See, I, I started recruiting by accident. I really did. I didn't probably get my first recruit to my third month because I didn't think it was real, Jeff. I thought the first month when I made six sales and made $1,500, I said, it's a fluke. <laughs> so I didn't tell nobody, did it, Gary? <laughs> then I did it again my second month, and I said, uh-oh. <laughs> then I did it my third month, and I'm like, Chris, this, I might be on to something. <laughs> so I went and got my first recruit, and this is what I told him. I think I found a way to get some, make some good money. You need to come look at it. That was it. I think I found a way to make some good money. You might want to come look at it. And he said, okay, yeah, I'll come. I got my second recruit by a guy who was in a restaurant because prior to Primerica, I couldn't eat in restaurants. But after 90 days of making some good part-time money, I went to a restaurant and a guy walked up to me and he said, are you Ivan Earl? And I said, yes. He said, what is that you sold my sister and replaced my policy? I thought I was going to fight. <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's going to be my first enemy agent confrontation. <laughs> but he had been in the business for five years. He was selling whole life insurance. He had never seen by term invested difference and nobody had ever explained to him the four evils of cash value insurance. Me being brand new, I didn't try to explain it to him either. <laughs> I said, you need to come by the office and meet the regional vice president and we'd be happy to talk to you about it then. <laughs> and he came the next day and the RVP spent some time with him and he quit his job that day and joined us full time in business. All recruiting. And guess what? He brought a guy to the meeting with him. That guy quit too and came with him. I'm saying all that to say that what our business has to be about is duplication. Has to be about us understanding the importance of recruiting and then understanding the importance of field training. We are show and tell company. Show people and tell them what to do and let them go do it. And it's all about duplication. And it starts small and it grows into something big. But you know, none of that matters if you don't get people licensed. See, in the era that I grew up in in Primerica, we had an expectation that everybody got licensed. We didn't recruit people that didn't get licensed. 
Now, I'm sure it happened sometime. We just didn't notice it. So how are we going to expand this? But wouldn't it be different if we really expected everybody we recruited to get a license? Wouldn't that be different? So you know, when Art Williams built this company, he built this company under the pretense that we had a 50% recruit the code license. I don't believe, Rob Davis, that people give us money to make us go away. I don't believe you can get on their nerves enough for them to say, here's $124. Take my application, and I'm going to go into the witness protection program, and I'm never going to see you again or talk to you again. People don't give away money. It's the mentality. You know, I always tell people, I promise you this, I promise you that 90% of all the people that are recruited by RVP get, get licensed. So what is it that the RVP does that nobody else does? Contact, communication, walking them through, holding their hand. We have an expectation that if we're going to spend our time with you, you got to get a license. I encourage all of us to adopt that. Is it going to happen? No. Are people going to quit? Yes. But, but don't do you expect them to quit or are you shocked when they quit? See, we were shocked when people quit. We were shocked. We, 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 already under, we didn't understand why would somebody walk away and not do this. So therefore, we stayed in contact with people. We walked them through the process. We, we just kind of bred life into them. And then we worked on getting people promoted. Man, it was about promotions. It was about an environment. I remember being a district leader and having two or three guys, and we would all meet every night talking about what it's going to be like to be an RVP. We talked about it. We dreamed about, man, one day, one day, we're going to become regional vice president. One day, this crazy company going to let us promote us to read the vice president. Why do we want to be a reading the vice president? Yes, it was a bigger contract. Yes, it was bigger overrides. But you know what? We wanted to be reading the vice presidents because reading the vice presidents get to promote regional. Vice Presidents. <laughs> Jeff, it wasn't just because we could make more money. It just wasn't because of a bigger contract that I could make but on, on a personal sale. It was the vision of building RVPs, giving other people the opportunity. I remember one time a guy asked me a question. He was interviewing me. He said, at what point did you think you were going to make it? And my answer was when I started developing other people that were making $100,000 a year, I thought I had a chance to make it. Because as an African American, I didn't know nobody that would quit a $100,000 a year opportunity. But it was about building RVPs. And you know, once we became an RVP, we just didn't say we have arrived. We had a thirst for becoming SVPs. We had a thirst to promote other RVPs. We had a thirst to cement ourselves in our business with real partnerships of people that had the RVP contract and people that was in full uniform by having the $100,000 ring. So we were thirsty to become SVPs. Then we were thirsty to become NSDs. Then we were thirsty to become SNSDs. And because we built the structure right, everything else fell in place. 
everything else falls in place. See, in this business, you can't build a structure, right, and not have the income. See, you got to decide which one you're going to do. Are you going to chase income or outcome? See, Primerica was built for you to have structure. It was built for you to continue to climb the ladder through promotions, which ultimately, which ultimately builds million-dollar earnings. How many of you would really like to be a million-dollar earner? Well, how do I do it? Today, we laid out the plan for you. We talked about growth. We talked about growing. So when you go home, I want you to look to the left and look to the right and ask yourself, how many people are following you? That's the beginning of you building a team. Maybe that number is two people, three people, four people, five people. But you got to have a plan to grow that number every 30 days. Every 30 days, that team needs to be a little bit bigger. Maybe it's one person bigger, two people bigger, three people bigger. But if you begin to expand that circle, you will begin to expand your numbers. You will begin to expand your production. And that breeds belief. So how many, how big do you want to be by next year? How big do I want to be by the end of the year? How many leaders do I have? Because the key to Primerica is leaders that can build leaders. Say leaders. That can build leaders. That's just not RVPs. That's every leader that can build leaders. See, when I become a district leader, my job is to build other district leaders. When I become a division leader, my job is to build other division leaders. When I become a regional leader, my job is to build other regional leaders. The company says I have to build six leaders to become an RVP. So when I become an RVP, my job is how many RVPs am I going to build? When I become SVP, how many SVPs am I going to build? When I become an NSD, how many NSDs am I going to build? SNSD, and then million dollar earners. And this everybody pushing each other up. This is the one place that you get more by helping other people get more. And if you adopt that mentality and you focus on that, then you will be successful here. Primerica is the greatest business opportunity in the world. We will change your life company that allows you to start the process part-time. We allow you to start the process to change your life part-time while you focus and master the fundamentals so that you can become full-time and go build something that can change your family for generations to come. Hey, guys, we got a lot of work to do. We got a whole world to change. Let's get up, get after it, and I'll see you at the top because the bottom is too crowded. Thank you. <laughs>